Hey y'all, Daniel Aaron here, your guide to vibrant living. Little story for you. You may have heard this one. There was a eager student of the way of the samurai. So eager and so skilled that he searched wide and far for the best teacher. And it turned out that the best teacher he could find, this is very long time ago in Japan, was far, far, far away in the mountains. He traveled um, several weeks to get to this mountain and then searched for several weeks more to find this teacher who was in seclusion. He was a hermit and he went to the teacher and <clears throat> knocked on the door and the teacher said, no, no students, get out of here. Okay, so bleh. came back the next day. And he said, look, I don't mean to bother you, but you know, I've come a really long ways and, I, and, I, and I, I know you're the best and I really want to learn. No, get out of here. Came back the third day. And you may know that there is a spiritual rule that if you ask a teacher three times, they must accept. So at that point, he said, okay. And they went outside and he said, let me, you know, let me evaluate your skills. And they did some uh, swordsmanship and at the end of it, the teacher said, okay, you can be my student. And <clears throat> the student said, great, how long will it take for me to become a master? And the teacher looked at him and he said, yeah, about uh, 19 years. The um, student thought about it for a minute and he said, what if I train twice as hard? What if I get up extra early every day? What if I work so hard? Teacher thought about it again. 40 years. Part of why I tell you that, and part of what I'm sharing in this video, Facebook Live Mini, I'll keep it brief, is a student of mine, not that I own anybody, but someone who's part of my membership. And I love this, by the way, how our virtual Sangha community works in one way, which is uh, somebody asked me a question there and then I have the opportunity to sit with a little bit and come back by video and this particular student, he can digest it whenever he wishes and replay it if he wishes. And so this story is in part for him and in part for all of us because as one of my teachers put it, on the way to happiness, there should be some happiness. And when we are in that driven mode of, I gotta do it and I gotta do it, we slow down the learning, we get contracted, we get driven, we miss the opportunities, we miss our genius. And so part of the teaching is to say, hey, you know what? As long as I'm moving in the direction that I wanna go, the right direction, then it doesn't matter how long it takes. And we get there faster when we have that sense of ease and trust in ourselves and trust in the process. Now, part of the question that came to me is, well, I'm you know, new into yoga, and what should I do? How should I do it? What kind of yoga? And I got a couple recommendations. One is, yes, there is a whole world of online yoga, and I am far from expert. A friend of mine, Jody Blumstein, I know is on Yoga Glow, and I've heard good reports about that, and I know there are so many different ones. So what I recommend online or in person, get a free trial. Right, go or do a you know cheap membership kind of thing at a place first, and try out a lot of different styles. Try out a lot of different teachers, because the yoga that works best is the one that you actually do that feels good, where you want to keep doing it. A writing teacher of mine years ago said, one measure for whether it's a good teacher for you is after you spend time with that teacher, do you feel more like doing the thing that you were doing? or less, right? So a teacher, good teacher should be challenging for you, yet also inspiring and leave you with the feeling of, I wanna do more of this because any practice, any study will work sooner or later if we keep going with it. Right? Second thing is especially for my friend who asked the question, he, part of what he's wanting is more physical awareness, um, better sense of body and health, body image, perhaps losing weight. There have been some struggles with um, physical weight and fat, which I can relate to, which 98% of the people that get into yoga can relate to. And 
So on that level, they will all help because they will all help get more in touch with, in tune with our body. And when we are more in tune, we have a better sense of what to eat, when to eat, when not to eat. And the kinds of yoga that incorporate presence, especially through breath, speaking of vinyasa, especially helpful for you, my friend, because they will also um, create a lot of physical movement. And you might love a kind of practice that's like ashtanga or what's often called power yoga, a type of um, very strong, almost athletic yoga. I love that style in part, and I love other styles, because I get a lot of uh, bang for the buck with it. I do, um, if it's a 15-minute practice or an hour practice, I it's essentialized, and I get a lot of physical movement, exercise, and mental spiritual tuning in with it. All right. Facebook Live Mini, I said. So I hope that that is helpful for you. I hope that's helpful for all of you. Remember, the best kind of yoga is the one that you continue to do. In the yoga scripture, it says stiram, which means steady, strong, challenging, and sukham, which means easy, joyful, pleasant. Right? And we're always looking for the balance of those two things in our practice. All right, y'all, that's it for me for now. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being interested in creating your vibrant life. If you're interested in joining us in the virtual Sangha, the membership, it's rockin'. I am so blessed and I'm so amazed at the breakthroughs that people are having there. So if you are interested, I'll put some information below. Join us. See you soon.